الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى في كتابه بلوغ المرام من ادله الاحكام في باب باب صلاه التطوع دي والنتري بريرز تشابتر نمبر 9 حديث نمبر 298 وعن عائشه رضي الله تعالى انها قالت عائشة رضي الله عنها شيء نريد الحديث ما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يزيد في رمضان ولا في غيره على إحدى عشرة ركعة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم does not increase more than eleven ركعات in the Ramadan or other than the Ramadan when it comes to the night prayers ويصلي أربعا فلا تسعى لنصلهن وطولهن and do not ask about he used to pray four number in four and do not ask about its beauty and do not ask about its length thumma yusalli arba'an and again he used to perform four and do not ask wala tas'al an husnihinna wala tulihin and do not ask about its beauty or its length thumma yusalli thalathan then rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after performing his four plus four eight then he performs three that makes up up to eleven raka'a wa qalat aisha fa qultu ya rasulullah atanamu qabla an tu'tir then aisha radiyallahu anha she asked rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya rasulullah do you sleep before you perform the witr ya aisha رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عائشة إن عيني تنامان ولا ينام قلبي ورلي ماي آيس سليبس بات ماي هارت دز نوت سليب متفق عليه ذس حديث إس ناريتد إن صحيح البخاري أند مسلم وراي مينينغ أوف دي حديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إت إس فروم ذا سنة أوف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات هي دز نوت بيرفورم Tarawih, it does not perform Salatul Layl, it does not perform Tahajjud, there are different names for the night prayers Tarawih, Salatul Layl, Qiyamul Layl, Tahajjud It does not perform more than 11 raka'a That's what the statement of Aisha radiallahu anha And we have from the many ahadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever perform more than 11 raka'a when it comes to qiyamul layl when it comes to the night prayers there is not even a single hadith which shows that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has performed more than 11 rak'ah but he performed this 11 rak'ah in different ways one of the ways it is mentioned in the hadith is that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform four in the beginning and four at the end four in the beginning and four at the end in the sense 2 plus 2 in the beginning of the that is middle mid part of the night then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to sleep for some time then again he used to perform 2 plus 2 at the last part of the night then he used to make witr this is one way of making salatul layl that's why in some of the masajids if you go to some of the masajids you will find some people performing tarawih making 2 plus 2 in the beginning and later they make 2 plus 2 later then they make they follow with the witr this is one of the ways But otherwise, we know from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform the tahajjud in different ways. For example, he used to make two plus two plus two plus two, then three. That makes around eleven. Another way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam performing salat al tahajjud is two plus two plus two plus two plus two. That is ten plus one rakaah. That is witr. This is another way of performing salat al tahajjud. Sometimes Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform the witr at a stretch make, making up to 5 7 do you understand i think we discussed in our last class how to make the witr 3 sometimes 5 sometimes 7 sometimes this different way of making witr with one stretch at one stretch how do you make witr 3 there are different ways number 1 You make two rakah, make salam, and then get up and make one rakah. That is one way. Another way is without sitting in between, 
the second rak'ah, you get up for the third rak'ah and perform the witr, salatul witr. So which does not resemble like maghrib, which does not resemble like the maghrib. But if you see in the madhab al hanafiya they perform salatul witr like the maghrib. When you ask them, why do you perform salatul witr like maghrib, they have a reason, but there is no dalil from the Quran and hadith. They say that since they recite dua al khudud, dua of khudud in the prayers, and we know in the Maghrib we do not recite dua al khudud. So since they recite dua al khudud in the Maghrib, in the witr, so that does not resemble like the Maghrib. That's the excuse they have. But if you see the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there is no clear proof from any of the hadith which says that the salatul witr. Which, which you perform three rakah, which resembles, resembles like the Maghrib. The other way of performing Salat al Witr is five rakah. Is five rakah. And how do you perform five rakah? At a stretch, with one salam at the end. Seven rakah at a stretch, with one salam at the end. Means he performs one rakah, gets up for second one, gets up for third, gets up for four, then six at the five, he makes salam. Another way is Number one, he gets up. Number two, he gets up. Number three, he gets up. Number four, he gets up. Number five, he gets up. Number three, he, six, he gets up. Number seven, he sits for the final salah. This is another way. Is it clear? We have many hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We just mentioned that salatul layl wa nahari mathna wa mathna. The prayers of the night and the day is twos and twos. So with this, we are very clear that the salat of the light night and day are twos and there is other wordings of from the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that salatul layl mathna wa mathna the night prayers are in twos and twos so you can perform in this different ways so here rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith hadith number 2 and 98 it's clear that he used to perform 2 plus 2 in the beginning then he used to give a long gap then he used to perform 2 2 plus 2 then he follows with the witr and we know that one rakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he recites in one rakah almost like hundred verses. And when he goes to the ruku, the ruku is as long as he used to recite. And when he used to go sujood, sujood is as, as long as the ruku, isn't it? And we know from the hadith, hadith that is mentioned in the uh, kutub. Wafi riwayatil. Okay, the, the further wordings. Rasul Aisha radiallahu anha she asked, La tas'al an husnihinna wa la tu'lihinna. Do not ask me about its beauty or about its length. Because it's too long. The salah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was too long. Very long. Further, the last wordings is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sleep in between the prayers. He used to sleep in between the prayers. So Aisha radiallahu anha she asked, he, she asked, Ya Rasulullah, Atana muqabala an tu'tir. Oh Rasulullah, are you sleeping before you pray with her? Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, Inna aynayya tanamani wa la yanamu qalbi. Verily, my eye sleeps, but my heart does not sleep. What does it mean? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows what is happening around. And this is from the characteristics. This is from the khasa'is of Nabi, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from the explicit character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this particular character was not given to any prophets before him. It was only given to him. And we, we know that there are certain things which was given to Rasulullah which was not given to the previous prophets. Can anybody mention some of it? Huh? No? The Quran, yes, of course, the books are given. That's a different one. That is one characteristics. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told in one of the hadith. Atayidu bi khamsin wa la yu'ti inna hadam min qabli. I've been given five things. I've given five things. Five is not restricted to five, but there are more than five. But which are not given to any other prophets before me. Number one. Number one. Allah has made this earth as a place of worship. Entire earth as a place of worship. Except certain places where we do we not worship. Like washrooms, maqbara, graveyards. Where the camels are, gra are grazed. The 
walk pathways in the junkyard in these places. And the soil was made as a place of purification, as a thing of purification. And this was not given to the previous prophets. The second thing is, I have been raised as a prophet to end, as a prophet to all the mankind. But the previous prophets were sent to certain nations and tribes for a certain period of time. Isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the ghanima. What is ghanima? The booty of war as halal for the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The booty of war was not halal for the previous generations. And the fourth thing which was mentioned in the hadith is that جُعِلَتْ لِفِي فِي قُلُوبِ الْكُفَّارِ الْخَوْفُ مِي فِي مَسِيرَةِ الشَّاءِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has made the fear, Allah has put the fear into the hearts of the believe, disbelievers even before the war starts a month, one month before it. Before one month, <coughs> war starts, the fear of the believers was put into the hearts of the disbelievers. And tahajjud was obligatory upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not for common people. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa can marry more than four. This was not for any other individual. Am I clear? So these are some of the characteristics. And this is one of the characteristics that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sleep, but his heart does not sleep. Am I clear about this? So this is from the characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you read a book called Shaba'il al-Tirmidhi, Shaba'il al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is narrated by Al-Tirmidhi radiyam rahimahullah, it talks about all the characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are around, around 400 hadiths in this book. This talks about every single character, his appearance, his talk, his way of talking, his way of walking. Everything is mentioned in this hadith. Shamail al-Tirmidhi. Shamail al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is written by Tirmidhi, Imam al-Tirmidhi. The further wordings, the, we'll continue with the hadith number 298. وفي رواية لهما عنها رضي الله تعالى أنها كان يصلي من الليل عشر ركعة ويؤتر بسجدة ويركع ركعتين الفجر في تلك ثلاثة فتلك ثلاثة عشر ثلاثة عشر فرد عائشة رضي الله عنها شيسيز ذات كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform tahajjud in 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 in 10 raka'ah. 10 raka'ah. Wa yu'tuir bi sajdatin. And then he used to make wither as 1 raka'ah. How many raka'ah does it make now? 11. Wa yarka'u raka'at al-fajari fatilka thalatha ashara. Then he used to make salatul Raka'atil Fajr, two Raka'at, Sunnah of the Fajr, okay, that makes up, to, make to, make up, makes up to how many? 13, makes up to 13. Hadith number 299, وَعَنْهَا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى هَنَّهَا قَالَتْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُسَلِّ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ ثَلَاثَ عَشَرَ رَكَعَةً وَيُؤْتِرُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ بِخَمْسٍ وَلَا يَجْلِسُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا فِي آخِرِهَا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is mentioned by Aisha radiallahu anha that Can Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform min al-layli thalathata ashara raka'a He used to perform 13 raka'a Wa yu'tiru mi min dhalik khamsin wa la yajlis fi shayin illa fi akhiriha Then he used to make five witr out of it So when you read all this hadith Okay, we'll read the hadith number, three, hadith number 300, hadith number 300, and we will explain you the different ways of performing with her. وَعَنْهَا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ أَنْهَا قَالَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ لَيْلٍ قَدْ أَوْتَرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَانْتَهَا وِتْرُهُ إِلَىٰ سَحْرٍ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ Aisha رَضِيَ اللَّهُ أَنْهَا She says that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make a witr as a last prayer before a sahar, a sahar here means tulu al fajr, before the time of the fajr starts. 
Now keeping all this hadith, no, hadith number 298, hadith number 299, and the further had, uh, addings of the, uh, the addings, the wordings of the hadith, the ulama have concluded with different ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performing salatu tahajjud. Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performs 10 raka'ah. That is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, then 1. How many it is? 11. Another hadith says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performs 10. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 makes about 10. Then 3 witr makes about 13. Then plus 2, that is 2 raka of the sunnah of the fajr. Another way is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, plus 2 that makes about 8 plus 3 that makes how many? 11 raka. Another way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performing salat al tahajjud is that 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 that makes about 8 plus 5. With it, how many rakah? Five. When say we say five, he gets up in all the four, but he sits at the last, he makes taslim. This makes up to 13. Is it clear? These are the different ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa performing the tahajjud. Here we have to understand one thing that there is some riwayah that talks about 11, some riwayah talks about 13. So the ulama have a ikhtilaf among the ulama. They say that the 11 is the tahajjud along with the witr. And the next two rakah, what he performs, it is the rakah which he used to perform for the fajr. Is it clear? That is more authentic, inshallah. Is it clear now? No. We'll go to the hadith number 301. Wa Abdullah bin Amr ibn Aas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عبد الله لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم من الليل فترف قيام الليل متفق عليه الله مستعان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says Abdullah bin Umar رضي الله عنه يا عمر يا عبد الله do not be like such and so and so person so and so person like how like whom he used to get up and pray for Qiyamul Layl, then he left it. Then he left it. And this hadith is authentic, which is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, do not be like Fulan, in the sense, the one who starts the Hajjud, the one who starts some good deed, he does it for 10 days, 15 days, 20 days and 30 days, then he leaves it off. But rather be the one who is consistent in doing that. But here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not discouraging a person not to stop or not to start, again not to stop. But rather it is something not praiseworthy in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is praiseworthy in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that أَحَبُّ الْعَمَالُ إِلَى اللَّهِ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa sallam أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ that you perform it continuously even if it is little. Even if it is little. You started making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. But do it consistently that Allah likes it. You pray salat al duha continuously that Allah likes it. You do any good deed even if it is small. Even if it is small. But that which you do continu consistently, continuously. Allah likes that. Rather a person starts something and stops. But Islam does not restrict you that you start and stop. But rather Islam encourages that you continue doing it. And this is praiseworthy in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Abdullah bin Umar here that La takun mithla fulan wa fulan. Do not be like so and so person. Kana yakumul layl. He used to pray in the nights. Wa kana tarakahu. Later he left it. So do not be like him. So once you start a deed, you start it. And the Sulama Rahimahullah, they have encouraged as to how to perform Salatul Layl. For example, you made an intention of performing Salatul Layl, then you get up in the last part of the night, put one day, two day, three days you got up, four three you slept. But rather the ulama they say that improve your worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with stages, with stages start with performing with her in the night 
after Isha, performing with Witr. After a few days, then start performing two raka'ah extra, then Witr. Then after a few days, make it four, then make Witr. After a few days, you know what happens? The moment you keep doing it, that will become a part of your habit. After a few days, then perform tahajjud. And what you keep continuously doing it. And if you do it continuously, that become a part of your habit. And the psychologists, they say that. If you do a thing for more than 21 days consistently, that become a habit. And if you do for 90 days that particular thing, that become a part of you. That become a part of you. That become your fitra. And I always give an example to my students that, you know, that will become a part of your DNA. That is part of, part of your DNA. If you do it anything for 90 days, that will become part of you. So once you do for 90 days, what happens? It will become a consistent habit in your life. So do not get it for three days, four days and leave for rest of the rest of the life. Rather, do it as much as possible. And you ask Allah's help in this. That's why we ask in the dua, Rabbi, a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadat. Oh Allah, help me in remembering, remembering you and thanking you and to do good deeds in utmost perfect way, perfection. So Allah is the one who helps us. So we ask Allah to help us to do this, inshaAllah ta'ala. But this is something which is not a discouraging way, as I told you. Do it, but do it as much as possible, inshaAllah ta'ala. Is it clear? No. Hadith number 302. Wa Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أوتروا يا أهل القرآن فإن الله وتر يحب الوتر رواه الخمسة وصححه ابن خزيمة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that this hadith is narrated by Ali رضي الله عنه أوتروا يا أهل القرآن O people of Quran O people of knowledge be consistent in performing salat al witr فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ وِتْرٌ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witr, is odd, it means is one. وَيُحِبُّ الْوِتْر And Allah likes witr. So performing your rawahu khamsa, this hadith is married in Tirmidhi, al-Nasai, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah and Musnad Ahmed. وَسَحَّهُ Ibn Khuzayma And this hadith is authenticated by Ibn Khuzayma, رحمه الله, a muhaddith. What is the meaning of in Allah witrun? What does it mean in Allah witrun? Who said this? In Allah witrun, yani in Allah wahidun la sharika lahu. Because Allah is one and there is no sharik with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This explains about the aqeedah. Kul hu wallahu ahad. Allah is only one, not two. Isn't it? Allah is only one. So Allah likes one. Allah likes doing one. That's why when we distribute chocolates, when we distribute dates, we would like to say that, you know, take one or take three. Why it's with it? Isn't it? See, if you want to give gifts, give in a wither way. <laughs> one or three. Then the other hadith says, give in twos. Give in twos. Give two things. That increases the love between the wahu yatahabu yatahabu bayn al ikhwa. It includes the love between the between the believer believers. So here Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that in Allah witr wa yuhibul witr. Allah is one and Allah likes that you perform witr. And salatul witr is something which is the right of a Muslim towards Allah subhanahu wa taala as an individual, even though it is mustahab, but it is always. Encouraged to perform Salatul Witr. To an extent, ulama rahimahumullah, they say that the one who misses the Witr continuously, he is a sinner. He is a sinner. But if you miss here and there sometimes, you are not a sinner. But if you miss bilkulliyah, by continuously, you will be a sinner, inshaAllah. Hadith number 303. وعن ابن أمر رضي الله تعالى أنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اجعلوا آخر صلاتكم بالليل بترا متفق عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that this hadith is narrated by ابن أمر رضي الله عنه اجعلوا آخر صلاتكم بالليل بترا and make the last prayer of you 
as the wither as the wither is it a condition is it a condition that you have to make the last prayers with it can't you perform with it after performing with it can't you perform any other prayers people have a misconception that with it is a last prayer and there is no prayer should be performed after the with it that is wrong this is been afdaliya it is from afdaliya it is afdal that you make the witr as last prayer for example you perform salatul isha then you perform witr then you got up in the light what will you do you can perform the rest of the prayers but you will not perform witr again because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told laysa hudaka witran fi al-layl there is no witran mean there are no two witr in the night there is only one witr if you have performed in the beginning of the time then you don't have to perform later but rather uh, but instead you can perform any other prayers but if you fear that you will sleep off you will not get up then you can perform with it if you get up you can perform the other prayers as well absolutely no problem is it clear now inshallah we can no we'll go to the hadith number 304 wa an talik ibn ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لا وتران في الليلة رواه أحمد ورزي أدر وري أحمد وثلاثة لا وثلاثة it's the printing is gone here وثلاثة وصحة ابن حبان تلك بن علي رضي الله عنه he says that he heard from رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that لا وتران في الليلة there is no two witr in one night if a person has performed witr in the beginning he don't have to perform witr again if he performs any other prayers one witr is enough inshallah ta'ala hadith number 305 wa abi wa an ubay ibn ka'b radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yu'tiru bi sabbih ism rabbik al'ala wa kul ya ayyuhal kafirun wa kul huwa allah wahad رواه أحمد وأبو داود والنسائي وزاد لا ولا يسلم إلا في آخرهن. This hadith of Abu Ibn Kaab, hadith number three hundred five, explains that what are the surahs that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to perform, recite in Salat al-Witr. He used to perform in the first rakah. He used to recite Surah al-Ala, صب حسب ربك العلا. In the second rakah, he used to recite Surah Al-Kafirun, Qul Ya Ayyuh Al-Kafirun. In the third rakah, he used to recite Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. That is Surah Al-Ikhlas. وَلَا يُسَلِّمُ إِلَّا فِي آخِرِهِنَّ And this hadith talks about that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performs with her at one stretch. He used to make salam at the last time, last rakah. That's a description, inshaAllah ta'ala. Wali Abi Dawood wa Tirmidhi nahuhu an Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa fihi kullu suratin fi raka'atin wa fil akhirati kullu wallahu ahad wal mu'adatayn. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite in every surah, in every, in every raka'a, two, two surah. Recite a surah in every raka'a. And he would recite in the last one, kullu wallahu ahad. This is min afdal. You can recite any surah. You can recite any ayah when it comes to the witr. You don't have to restrict only with surah al-ala or surah al-kulya ayu al-kafirun or surah al-ikhlas. You can recite any surah from any part of the Quran. Absolutely no problem, inshaAllah ta'ala. But if it is in tartib, that is min afdal, min ba'b al-afdal, mustahab, highly recommended if it is in the in order. If you recite from end of the Quran, middle of the Quran, beginning of the Quran, if you jumble it up, Absolutely no problem, inshaAllah. Hadith number 2306. And we'll stop here. How much time uh, we have taken the class? 40 minutes? We'll take the hadith and we'll stop here and we'll take the questions. And Abi Sa'i, if there are any questions, uh, those who are attending online can text me right now so we can adjust the timings. And Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. أوتروا قبل أن تصبحوا رواه مسلم 
ولي ابن حباد من أدرك الصبح ولم يؤتر فلا وتر له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في سيسدك أوتروا قبل الصبح قبل أن تصبحوا ميك صلاة الوتر بفور بطلوع الفجر بفور دي فجر ستارتس بفور دي فجر ستارتس what we understand is that the timing of the wither starts from after the Isha till Tulu il Fajr, not Tulu il Shams, before the Fajr starts. Before the Fajr starts. Now, the, fad, the other word is it's mentioned that Man adraka subah walam yu'tir fala witra lahu. And who, the one who got the Salat al Fajr and did not perform Salat al Witr, there is no Witr for him. But what we understand is that once the Fajr time starts, you can't perform with her. You can't perform with her. You can compensate, you can compensate the with her after Tulu is Shams. After the sun is risen. And how are you going to compensate? For example, if you pray one raka'ah with her in the night, normally this is a habit, then you make two raka'ah in the day with the intention of the with her. If you perform three raka'ah, normally in the night with her, and you missed it, then you do it after the sunrise, how many rakah? 2 plus 2, that is 4 rakah, with the intention of with it. This is how you compensate. But if you said Allahu Akbar and started with her, then the Imam gives the Adhan. The Mu'addin gives the Adhan. Then you have performed one rakah, or ruku, or sujood. In that case, you have got the with her. Then you complete the rest in the Continue it. That will not be Qadha. That will not be Qadha. And we know that how we are going to understand the Qadha here is that by getting one Raka at least. If you get one Raka in its timing, then that is not Qadha. Even if you perform rest of the prayers in the other timings. Is it clear? Is it clear now? Not with the with, not with Takbir al ihram You say Allahu Akbar, then Mu'addin gives, the, the Mu'addin gives Adhan. No, that becomes Qadha. According to the Majority of the ulama, some of the ulama they say no, since you got takbir al ihram and Mu'addin gives adhan, you continue praying it, but that will be considered as qada. Is it clear? This is a ruling inshaAllah. Okay, we'll take one more hadith, hadith number 308. Wa call. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من نام عن الوتر أو نسي فليصلي إذا أصبح ذكر أو ذكر رواه الخمسة إلا النساء. This hadith it is mentioned that whoever sleeps and did not perform witr or he forgot to pray witr فليصلي إذا أصبح let him pray once he prays صلاة الفجر أو ذكر when he remembers it. For example, you did not pray witr. Or you forgot, then what will you do? You will pray it when you remember. And when will you pray when you when you remember when after the Salatul Fajr? Can you pray? No. When you remember after Salatul Fajr, you wait until the sun rises. Then you pray after that. That's the way, inshallah. Because there is no salah after Salatul Fajr. Except for Dawatul Asbab, when you enter the masjid, or Salatul Janaza, or but rather, but you can't perform other prayers like Mithra or something. Okay, you have to do it after the sunrise, inshallah. Ta'ala. With this, we'll stop here. We'll continue our next class. We'll take the questions. Any questions here? Any questions? Any questions online? Uh, you will get the rakah, inshallah. So the question here is that um, a person is praying with her one rakah and he is in the tashahud. Okay, he is in the tashahud. And the imam gives adhan. Uh, the mu'adhan gives the adhan. So is it, com is it considered as qaba or is it considered to be performed in its timing? It is considered to be performed in its timing. Inshallah.
questions are there i just uh, <coughs> The videos are available something. Okay. Right. There's some questions. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can we pray just one rakah of witr without praying two rakah before that? Yes. The question here is that can we pray one rakah of witr? Without performing two raka before that, yes, you can perform one raka, absolutely no problem. Another question is, I researched on this topic, and although many scholars consider it's okay, there are others who consider it makru because it was not proven from the sunnah to pray one one without with her, without any preceding raka. No. You can perform one raka with her, absolutely no problem, and I don't think so. Any of the ulama have considered it as a makru. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to perform one rakah. And we have explained in the hadith. No. Yeah. Yes. Witr is odd. One, three, five, seven, doesn't matter, inshaAllah. Um, what do if Iman goes to Oh, what do if Imam goes to Ruku before we finish Fatiha if we consider it's a Ruku? The question asked here is Barakallah Feek. Is, uh, the question here is a person joined the Raka'ah and Imam goes to the Ruku. Imam goes to the Ruku and this person did not recite Surah Fatiha. Will that Raka'ah will be considered as Raka'ah or does he have to compensate or not? This is, there is a difference of opinion among the scholars and both the opinions are sahih. Both the opinions are sahih. Some of the ulama like Imam Bukhari and some other scholars, they say that since you have missed one of the arkan, that is Surah Al-Fatiha, you have to get up and pray one rakah. Some of the ulama, other set of the ulama, they say that since you got the ruku, since you got the ruku and we have supporting hadith for that, in that case, you don't have to repeat the that particular raka. Is it clear? So what you do is, sometimes you do that, sometimes you do this. So you have done justice on both the masail, inshaAllah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when with it done as four after sunrise, is it similar to Dhuhr? Yes. It will be, with the yoniya will be Four raka, uh, your niya will be four raka. Sorry, your niya will be with her, but the sola will be of four raka. That is because it should not resemble like the with her that you perform in the daytime. With her is performed in the night, the two at the end of the prayers. That is the way, inshallah. Yes, yes, How do you perform uh, with her? Uh, if you perform three raka with her, you make two plus two not at a switch. And one more thing here, uh, we have uh, an explanation here is that some people they perform four raka at a switch before Dhuhr, when it comes to Sunan Rawati, you must have seen. Sunan Rawati, before, Sunan, before the Salat of Dhuhr, they perform four at a switch. Normally what is? Two plus two. Plus four, then two. But some people perform at a switch, four raka. What about this? Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal is of the opinion that whoever performs Sunan Rawatib at a stretch 4, his salah is invalid, batil. Because there is no dalil from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to show that, to show, show that he performed 4. But it is mentioned 4, Arba'a. If you see the hadith of 2, uh, which is hadith is that? 298. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa yusalli Arba'an, Arba'an. Arba means not four at a stretch, but rather two plus two it is. Similarly, Salatul Layli wa Nahari Mathna wa Mathna. It is two plus two. There is no at a stretch four. Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Rahimahullah, and Jumhur al-Ulama, they say that 
if a person performs atishrich four, he is, he has done something against sunnah, but the salah is valid. But the salah is valid. And this opinion is, I think, which is more better than the opinion of Imam Ahmed, where he was taught say that it is an innovation and it is a batil. Inshallah. Uh, another question here, is it permissible to take home on lease? No, you're not supposed to take home on lease. It is considered as uh, riba. It is considered as a kind of interest. Lease is where I rent out my house with a with, by taking a deposit of huge amount. And I do not take any rent from that person for a certain period of time. So this is like uh, a riba. Some people, what they do is, they take 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, whatever it is, and for cheating purpose, they take 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 rupees. Even this is not correct. This is not correct. But what you can do is, what you can do is, you can take more advance and you can make the urf, what is considered as a, in the, in the local area, which is at least considered as a rent, 5k, 6k, 7k, whatever it is, that you can take. In that case, inshallah, you can take more advance. This is what the ulama rahimahullah, they say. But without rent, taking more advance and renting it out, this is from the, uh, this falls under the interest. And most of our community are uh, following, in, uh, you know, doing this. And there are many evils, for example. What they have done, some of the people, what they have done, they took a lot of lease, a lot of money, and now they are not able to pay it back. They spent that money. They invested somewhere, they lost it. Now they are not able to pay it back. So always, you know, you stick on to the way that is middle. When you stick on to the, you know, the middle path, you will not fall into any ways of extremism. There is another question. What is the evidence that Prophet wasallam prayed only one rakah, qiyam, as there is hadith which says Prophet used to pray 9 or 11, including with her. There is a hadith here, right? The hadith of 298 which we studied. Canada, uh, the hadith number 298 with the extending wording, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa performed 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, 10. Then he performed one rakah with her. This is a hadith. Only one. Only one. No, no. Rasulullah sallallahu did not perform only one. Never he performed only one. Uh, let me tell you one thing. Either it is one, either it is three. That is with it. You can perform. The, the rest of the prayers that what Rasulullah used to perform is the Hajjud, which is obligatory upon him. So there is no way that Rasulullah has ever missed it. Ever missed it. So it is for you and me. It is for you and me. How many of us are praying the Hajjud? <laughs> Once in move, blue, blue moon we perform. Wallahu alam. Isn't it? So it is for us to perform one or three. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa there is no question of him missing the hajjud and he is only performing one with her. Hope it's clear inshallah. Yeah. Student of life, barakallahu feek, you have a lot of questions. <laughs> Are there different ways of uh, placing, placing right hand on left hand in salah? Yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to keep his hand on the chest this way. And sometimes he used to hold this way. Number one, number two. Both are correct, inshallah. Any questions here? Left? Yeah. Yes. No, I didn't understand the question. Consistency? Okay. Uh, the question here is that should I have uh, should I have to pray with her? If I praying 5, 7 or 3, do I have to continuously pray the same way? No. We can uh, pray differently, however you want, inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was performing different ways. Our deen is flexible. Our religion is flexible. Alhamdulillah. No. Yes. For example, a person he missed the sunnah of the fajr and should he make it up? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
كان يصلي ركعت الفجر في حضر وسفرا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم used to perform the two rakah of the fajr whenever he was traveling whenever he was mukim he never used to miss that he would never used to miss that inshallah ta'ala used to perform yes yes no you can perform we can perform for example you came to the masjid the salah has started started and the uh, salatul uh, fajr is going on immediately after that you get up and perform inshallah to rakah it's fine and we have a hadith of uh, one of the sahabi did and rasul approved it okay there is one issue where you can't perform one way where you can't perform where you can perform is that um, you got up late now the sun is rising so what do you do you just perform only the fard once after the sun rises then you perform the sunnah of the fajr not at that particular time here the exception is only for the obligatory prayers not for every prayer is it clear no you asked me a question about the marriage is it sunnah or mustahab wajib isn't it it has explanation it's the explanation the generally the rule of the marriage is sunnah it is mubah it is something allowed but sometimes the marriage will become wajib sometimes the marriage will become makru sometimes the marriage will become haram sometimes the marriage will become mustahab when it becomes wajib is that when the marriage becomes wajib is that if a person fears for the zina whether is married or unmarried if whether is married or unmarried then it is wajib upon him to marry if a person has shahwa does not have shahwa but he wants to get married he has money in that case he can get married it is mustahab one or two or three whatever it is number three the marriage become haram when it becomes haram when you think that during the war is happening in this country the war is happening and a lot of uh, chaos is going on in that case you are taking a responsibility at that particular time it becomes haram and also if you fear that you are going to harm her physically and mentally and however you know your nature you're going to harm it becomes haram upon you it becomes makru the marriage will become makru when it becomes makru a faqir who don't have shahwa but he loves to marry a faqir who don't have shahwa but he loves to marry for him it is uh disliked you understand so generally the rule is sunnah but it falls into different categories depending upon the situation of the certain individual is it clear his name barakallah fik tai will you will get the tahajjud inshallah you are praying tahajjud okay what is the meaning of tahajjud what is the meaning of tahajjud we know the salat the prayers of uh, prayers are different names salatul lail qiyamul lail tahajjud isn't it tahajjud means the one who sleeps and gets up and pray in the third part of the night that is known as tahajjud wa huwa mutahajjid mutahajjid means the one who sleeps then he gets up then he prays then is mutahajjid tahajjud salatul qiyamul lail any time without sleeping without sleeping or not sleeping the one who gets up and sleep from the sleep and pray he is known as mutahajjid tahajjud inshallah yeah yes the question very good question here is that um, praying with the salah regularly consistently only one rakah that is something which ulama rahimahullah has uh, disliked it so try to make it sometime three sometime one sometime five sometime seven try to pray in different ways inshallah taala do not stick on to one thing now very good point okay the question here is that can a person uh, miss dua ul qunut in the witr dua ul qunut is not wajib in the first place it is mustahab it is highly recommended Sometimes Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite qunut sometimes he used to leave it wa huwa yadullu ala anna du'a al qunut laysa wajiban it is not wajib this shows that it is not wajib walau kana wajiban kana yastamiru fi hada fi fi salatihi if it is wajib 
he would have continued praying in the mithat. So what do we understand? Dua of kunut is not wajib. It is mustahab. If somebody is missing it, absolutely no problem, inshaAllah. Is it clear? We'll... Uh, no, dua al kunut has specific dua, right? That's a specific dua. You have to make specific one, inshaAllah. No. We'll uh, stop here. Father Allah, who are the Muslim Allah, who are the Nabi, Muhammad, and who are the early, he was happy, he is mine. Wabarak Allah, who fikum, which is a kum, Allah, who are a rakum, fi usbu al qadim. See you next Sunday. Uh, be the Nilahi ala khair with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.